So, um, I'm excited. I have a, uh, um, we have a treat for you. Y'all don't have to hear me. Yay! I heard Michelle say that. Amen, Walls. Yeah, I'm just joking. So, I'm excited. Um, it's three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I felt like the Lord was uh, putting something during our prayer time um, when we were praying on for the outpouring that God put, was putting something in one of our elders' hearts. And, uh, and then when we started talking about it, it just it was evident that it was. So I'm excited. If you would, would you put your hands together for one of our elders, Wanda Rosser. 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 Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Do y'all realize that we're sitting in an assembly of kings right now? Because we're all called to be kings and priests. And did you know that most of us don't know that in a way that we put it to work and use in our life? That's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm just going to give you a little preview. We're going to go ahead and pray before we start, if that's okay. Father, I thank you for, once again, an opportunity to be in your house and to bring your word in the way that you would want me to bring it. I thank you, Lord, for every person that is here. I thank you, Lord, that they're meant to be here this day, and they're meant to hear what you have to say this day. So, Father, I just ask that our hearts would be ready to receive, that our ears would be ready to hear, and, God, that we would take, even if it's just a part of today's message, and do something with it and apply it to our lives, Lord, because it's time that we live the way you called us to live. So we thank you, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. As a matter of fact, at the initiation of his ministry, he preached the kingdom. John the Baptist preached the kingdom. They were proclaiming that the kingdom of God had came. It had arrived. It was there. And they were talking about Jesus, of course. Because when Jesus came... So did the kingdom, because Jesus is the kingdom. He represents the kingdom, and everything that he does is kingdom. So all through his ministry, he tells the disciples to go, proclaim the kingdom of God. He sends out the 72, proclaim the kingdom of God. He tells us to pray the kingdom of God here on earth. So that shows me that it's important. It's important because the Bible is about a king and a kingdom. It is about a kingdom that is an invisible heavenly kingdom where God is now. It is about a kingdom here on earth that we're supposed to be ruling over right now. It's about the kingdom that is to come and stand forever on this earth. So the kingdom is both Present and future. We have a kingdom we need to walk out now. We have a kingdom we are living to be able to spend our eternity. And we all know the story. We all know. Everybody that's ever read the Bible, ever heard a sermon, knows the story of how everything was lost in the garden. But let's go through it again. So we know... That Adam and Eve was given kingship. They were given authority. They were given power. They were given rulership. They were given dominion. And they were told to watch over the earth. Rule over it. Have dominion over it. You have power over it. You have authority over it. And every bit of its resources. Not just a little bit. But the whole earth. Now Satan... He lost that war when he tried it in heaven, but he comes down and he deceives them. And temporarily, he wins. Temporarily. He comes down and he attempted to do the same thing. He wanted to get them to want to be like God. So when they disobeyed God, they lost it all. Oh, they got to live on earth, but not in that garden. 
They lost their authority. They lost their kingship. They lost everything that he had given them. And therefore, after that, after they failed, we were dead to trespasses. We were dead because of our sin. We were no longer considered holy, righteous. We no longer had that kind of kingship that we could do what we needed to do on this earth. We didn't have that relationship back with the Father anymore. We didn't have any of it because we listened to the enemy and we disobeyed God. Now, we all have our disobedience. We're not supposed to be disobeying him. But that was a disobedience that cost them so much that it trickles down to us today. So Jesus comes because he's the only one. Because look, who was it given to? Who was it given to? The, a man, right? Who lost it? A man. But who did it take to regain it? A man, but not the first Adam, the second. Jesus. And he legally lost it. We legally lost it. That's why Jesus had to legally regain it. It was ours. But somewhere along, the, along our Christian walk, we seem to, and I've heard this, and I've said it. Well, Satan's the ruler of this world. You know, we can only do what we can do because Satan's the ruler of this world. That's not true. That is not true. Now, when Jesus came and he was fasting and he was doing the 40 days and Satan come to tempt him and he said, you know, if you'll just bow down and worship me, I will give you the power and authority over these kingdoms. And, you know, he could have. Because at that time, he was the ruler of this world. It was given to him. We gave it. We gave it. Man gave it. But after Jesus' death and resurrection where he defeated the grave, he defeated death, he defeated hell, he defeated the devil. And he regained it. That means, regain means we had it. We lost it. He came. He won it back. And then he handed it over to his church. Amen. He handed it back over to us. And we have to preach the kingdom to understand what we're supposed to be doing. So in Luke 4, 43, and I'm in the ESV version, it tells us, he says to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for this is why I have been sent. Genesis 126. Then God said, let us make man in our image. And it says, let us, because that's the Holy Trinity in council right there. That's God the Father. God the Son and, and God the Holy Spirit all saying, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish and the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let them have dominion over everything. That's what he's saying. So he gave us dominion. He gave us dominion so that we could rule the earth the way heaven was ruled. The way heaven is ruled is the way that we were always supposed to rule. So, we're living our lives. We're struggling day to day. We have sickness. We have financial crisis. We know people that's lost. Our family. We know people on drugs. Usually some in our family. And we know that the world is not looking too good right now. But somewhere we have forgotten that we rule this earth now. Right. And see, when we rule and we have dominion and we have power and we have everything that we need, we don't need to worry about money. We don't need to worry about where we're going to get something from if something happens. A king has everything he needs. And we should be living like a king. So we got to learn to live like kings, right? And what? Listen, if we're going to understand Jesus, we must understand kings and kingship. If we're going to understand the word of God, we've got to understand kingdom, period. And if we don't understand it, then we're not going to live it because... When all this started and what he was talking about, and I began to, the Lord began to talk to me about kingdom. He said, they have forgotten that it was always about me, 
but it's about the kingdom. He said, my people choose to live the way they live because they're not doing what I said. We're not, being, uh, we're not listening. We're not being obedient to his word. Yes, he gives us everything in the Bible that we need to know. How we're supposed to live. How we're supposed to walk. How we're supposed to talk. Never been of that leads back to the kingdom. Because when you think kingdom, act kingdom, walk kingdom, live kingdom, then you are bringing the kingdom everywhere you go. And when a kingdom takes over another kingdom, then the kingdom that was taken over becomes like the kingdom that took it over. And we should be walking around everywhere we go. And our, kingdom, our kingship should be so overbearing that we change people when they're around us. That we change them. And then we're supposed to be able through our kingship to even go in and change a whole country if necessary. It really all boils down. See, he gave us all this kingship and this authority and this power because he's saying, look, you're my representatives here on earth. You are the kingdom citizens of heaven, but you are the kingship I have placed on earth to be my representative, my ambassador, and everything that I do, I want you to do it too. Everything you saw Jesus do, I want you to do it too. And listen, he did not just come to die on a cross so that we could have eternity. He came to teach us how to live like him, live like the kingdom. He came to do what the first Adam was supposed to do, which was to teach everybody how to live like kingdom. But when you disobey and sin comes in, you can't teach nothing. You can't teach by doing the opposite. You can only teach by example. And until we start walking as kings and living as kings, we're not an example. That's right. So when people look at us and they say, oh, well, that's Wanda. She's a Christian, but she's broke, broke, broke. You know why Wanda's broke, broke, broke? Or why Wanda appears to be broke? Because Wanda needs to live like a king. Wanda needs, to, Wanda needs to take what God gives to me and I need to do what I am supposed to do with it and give it back into the kingdom. Whatever he teaches me, I give it back to the kingdom. Whatever he gives me, blesses me with, I give it back to the kingdom. We are kingdom people living on an earthly kingdom, kingdom striving for that heavenly kingdom. So what are we going to do? Listen, and I can prove to you, because he tells us that he conferred onto us a kingdom. All right? Luke twenty-two twenty-nine. 29. I got out of order. But Luke twenty-two twenty-nine, 29. And my, my version says, And I assign, confer, bestow to you, as my father assign, confer, bestow to me. So God gave Jesus a kingdom, and Jesus bestowed it onto us. God gave him everything, he gave it to us. When they were getting ready to go out at the, the disciples, and he was at the end of the time before he goes back to be with the Father, and, and they're all gathered around, and Jesus is sitting in the boat, and he tells them what they're to go out and do. And it says in Luke 9, 1 and 2, it says he called the twelve together, and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. So Jesus came to teach us about the Father. He came to teach us about heaven. He came to teach us about the kingdom. And he came to teach us everything that we're supposed to do. So did he tell them just go out and spread the gospel? Tell about me. Tell about me, Jesus. Tell them that's the way that you get to heaven. And you're good. Because I believe the word of God says he told them to go out and do the same things that he did. To go out and heal. To go out and, and, and proclaim the kingdom. If you look at your everyday life, how much do you proclaim the kingdom of God in every day? So our first priority 
should be the kingdom of God. Y'all, I found out something real interesting in this. We have all read the scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, right? And all else will be added unto you. Now, in my mind, I knew that that meant that, you know, if I seek God first, then everything else I need is going to be given to me. But it really means more. So when he tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God, he's telling us to seek the secrets of the kingdom. Because they're secrets that God wants to show us. But we can't find those things unless we're looking, unless we're seeking, right? And you pretty much we know what the definition is for seek, but I just want to give you some of the words. Seek means to investigate, to inquire, to pursue, to explore, to ask for, to question, to obtain or achieve something. So we are to seek the kingdom. Pursue the kingdom, explore the kingdom, go after the kingdom, ask for the kingdom, obtain the kingdom. We are kingdom people, right? We should be living as a king. So then he turns around and he tells us, oh, and by the way, in Hebrew, that word means diligent. So not only do we seek it, but we keep seeking, keep seeking, keep seeking, and keep seeking. Because if somebody tells you, I've got, listen, that's why it's like a treasure, a hidden treasure. It's a hidden treasure because it's in God's word. Those secrets, when we go looking to learn about the kingdom, we will find secrets to the kingdom. Those secrets are important because we need them to have that Abundant life. Yes, he tells us in his word, but there's deep revelation that he's not going to give us unless we go looking. If we don't go seeking, we're not going to find it. He tells us, he says, for those who have much, more will be given. For those that have a little, it will be taken away. You want to know why that is? Those who go and search the secrets and get them will be given more secrets. Those who will not take the time to search what they have, the devil will snatch it right away the minute that they hear it. It's like when we sit in church and we hear the word. You know, they say the average is about 25% that gets that word and goes out and applies it to their life. But there's 100% here. So 75% of y'all are going to leave here. Wake up. Remember it when you go, okay? Because... I think God's trying to teach me how to live a better life, and I'd like to help you to learn it too. I've done a lot, been through a lot, made a thousand mistakes. So when I stand up here and tell you we got to stop this, I'm telling you from experience and with authority because I'm a king in an assembly of kings, and we're a bunch of good-looking kings. This world is not run by the devil anymore. Now listen, he, he interferes. He interferes. But he's a squatter. See, he's been hanging around. He's a squatter. He's been hanging around. Don't have enough sense to realize Jesus done kicked him out. And he's like those people going to go and he's just going to stay here until we kick him out again. Well, we don't. He's going to get kicked out again. But he's a squatter. He don't even belong here with the authority that he thinks he has. And you know that he gets really scared when he thinks that any of y'all are going to get that. Come on, that's right. So, you know, we've been preached to about seeking the kingdom, but I want to know the secrets. I want to know the secrets. God, what is the secret of knowing you in such a way that I know you Better than I know myself. What is the secret, Lord, that I need to know to bring in as many as I can and advance the kingdom? I need the secrets to wholeness and health and love. I need the secrets, Lord, that help me to be that child of God, but yet that 
king that can stand firm. I need the secrets that you'll only show those who go looking. You tell me to live like a king. Show me, God, how to live like a king. If I'm going to go to college and I want that degree, then I think I've used this before, but if I sit down and I study and I study and I show myself approved by studying, I get that diploma or that degree that I'm going to college for. If I try to go and get that without putting in the study, I'm not going to get no degree. So as Christians, we have to stop trying to get to the top of the mountain without climbing up it. We got to stop putting ourselves in front of the cart and get back behind it so we can be led. So we can lead others. We got to do it. Every time we come up here, anybody that stands up here pretty much will tell you that obedience is a key. Well, disobedience lost Adam and Eve their rights. It took a powerful king to get it back. And he has entrusted us to walk through this life and to live as kings. So in understanding of a kingdom, there's four elements, right? You got your king, your kingdom, your laws, and your subjects. We all know the kingdom, we've discussed it. It's future. It's present. Jesus is the present. The kingdom of heaven on earth is the future. And a kingdom is a territory, country, state that a king rules over, that he owns, that he runs. And a king is the one who has the dominion over that, which we have dominion over the earth. Laws, those are the things that we get tripped up on. Laws are the things we need to really be studying. Laws are the things that tells us what to do Tells us how we're supposed to be living. Tells us the rules of that kingdom. His commandments are rules of that kingdom. Everything that he has instructed us to do through his son Jesus is rules to that kingdom. So we know the things that are allowed, the things that are not allowed. And the subjects are us. Or those who sit under that king. We sit under a king who we have to submit to. And that's what a subject does. It submits to the kingdom authority, to the king's authority. So we have to submit to his authority. So when he says, I want you to do this, 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 and this, and we say, okay, I'll do this, this, and this, but I'm not doing this, then that's, that's disobedience. Come on. I think the hardest part about anything that we have to accept about Jesus is that we have to be obedient. Why? We're raised to be self-sufficient, take care of ourselves, grow up, make your own money, do everything, don't depend on nobody, and then all of a sudden your world crashes down because Jesus says, no, nope. you can't be self-sufficient. you got to rely on God. You can't make those decisions. You're going to mess it up. God don't want our self-reliancy. God wants our obedience. God doesn't need us to come up with all the solutions. He just needs us to listen. Because he'll say, they have ears, but they do not hear. They have eyes, but they do not see. Now, why is that? What's those things? Megaphone? Does he need to come back in the flesh with a megaphone and say, I told you what to do. Come on. Get in the Word of God. It's right there. But obviously, that's why he gave us the secrets. Because he knew us as a people, we may not get in that Word as much as we're supposed to. But you know what? When you begin to seek the kingdom of God, you begin to desire to live like a king. And when you begin to find those secrets... You just want to go searching even more. And let's don't forget that he also said, seek the kingdom of God in all its righteousness. Righteousness. See, because he's holy. 
And when we met Jesus, we became holy. Come on. That's right. He's righteous. And when he come into our heart, we became righteous. That's right. And here's the really the crazy thing about it. You know, when, when God created man, he breathed into that man's nostrils for life. And then when Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, what happened? He says, be ye filled and breathed into them. The Holy Spirit is part of those kingdom secrets. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of God's presence. The Holy Spirit is our powerhouse. God is our source. And when we begin to understand that, we become a force to be reckoned with. Listen, I'm a hard worker. But I'm kind of tired of working so hard to do something my way when God's told me the right way to do it. And believe me, my way is never the right way. 57 years of mistakes and I am qualified to tell you my way is not the right way. But it's okay. Because he'll still take everything that I've been through and he will use it for my good and his glory. And we can find something positive in everything that we go through. Don't look at it as a defeat. Look at it as I learned a valuable lesson because I ain't being defeated that way again. So Jesus come and he taught them everything that they were supposed to do. It's in the word of God shows us what we're supposed to do. I don't know about y'all but Thursday, I believe it was Thursday night, Pastor Chip was up here and he was saying the very same thing that I feel. And it might have been next last Sunday but I don't remember. But he's saying, I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of living life when we're supposed to be walking in such kingship and blessings. And we're not. But more than anything, even over ourselves living that kingly life, we are supposed to be advancing the kingdom. And if we're going to advance the kingdom, we better understand the kingdom. And if we're going to understand it, then we're going to be able to live in it, dwell in it, and do everything and make it as productive as it can be. See, Jesus called us to be active. God's kingdom is active. It is also supernatural. And we need the Holy Spirit because here's one of the things that's really hitting me. We can witness with our words. We can Study, and we can tell somebody what we believe the answers are by the word. But Jesus said, do what I do. And you know what he did? He walked in the supernatural. Miracles, signs, wonders. Where is that in our life? If he did it, we're supposed to do it. But we don't. The Holy Spirit through us, God working through us, we can walk in the supernatural. But it is the Holy Spirit who's having to retrain us to go back to the original state we was in when it all started. How does he retrain us? Through the word of God. How do we learn? By seeing the kingdom manifested. You know what causes people to come to God? Let somebody be up here that can't walk and they're in a wheelchair. I can talk to them all day long, but that's not going to change as much as if God touches and heals them. And then when God heals them, as Pastor Chip's been preaching, once we meet the need, as he says, then we can witness to them and see them changed. The supernatural has to be a part of the Christian life. We can't sit no more and come to church on Sunday, hear a good word, feel good with a little bit of music, Go home and hopefully keep that word. The devil didn't take it from us and we apply it. But we're only half living. We're only half living if we're only living by the word of God. In order to fully live, we got to step into that kingship. 
And we've got to think of ourselves as kings. When you get up and everything's gone wrong, you don't, don't, it doesn't matter if it's a good day or a bad day, you're still a kingdom, kingdom child. It doesn't matter what comes at you because who, who is it that's your judge? God. Who's going to hurt you? Nobody. You need something, you've got the authority to have it. You've got the privilege. You've got the right. You need something on earth to move, you've got the rain. You got everything that you need. But how are we going to start using it? See, he began to show me that everything that we had before, when he says receive, one means to have, one means to have again. Receive means to have, which means we had it. Even the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive again the Holy Spirit is what he was saying. We already had the Holy Spirit, even though it doesn't talk a lot about that. But the Holy Spirit was there. When Adam and Eve first came, they didn't, they didn't have the issue of sin. So they could walk and talk and communicate. It was only when that sin come in that we lost that, and then Jesus gave it back. So we're kings. We're also priests, but today we're talking about kings. So what do we do? What do we do? We act like kings. My bank account, y'all don't even have a bank account. My bank account may have zero in it. But as a king, I say I'm rich. The home that I live in may not look like the home that I want to have, but you know what? I live in a palace. My body may not act the way that I want it to act sometimes. But I'm a king and I've got the resources to take care of that. So if you're kingdom people with kingdom resources, when will we begin to use them? Every day you should get up. When the king gets up, he has everything he wants. He's got people waiting on him at his beck and call. He don't have to worry about his clothes. He don't have to worry about his breakfast. He don't have to worry about anything. And that's got a little bit to do with the parable about the seed because what happens is the, the cares of the world will choke us. But if we will seek first the kingdom of God and not the things of this world, we don't. We don't have to worry about a thing. So we need to advance the kingdom. And I'm serious. Because I know some of you are like me. And this really just isn't enough. I'm going to be telling you the truth here. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Please don't be satisfied. Unless you're out here witnessing and seeing a thousand people a week come to the Lord. Don't be satisfied. I mean, don't, just don't be satisfied. It's only when we can say, God, I can't get enough of your presence. God, I can't get enough of you. God, I want to know more of your secrets. God, I want you. And I'm going to seek you first. Because nothing else matters. And I know that if I seek you first and I walk in your righteousness and I learn to live righteously like you, there is nothing that I need that I will not have. I didn't say want. I said need. He ain't giving you a Ferrari. Or in my case, Alexis. So we need to stand up and we need to make a decision. Listen, seriously, y'all. I say that all the time, but listen, I'm so serious. As I started studying this, I started, I actually began to fast and pray. And I said, God, teach me kingdom. Teach me kingdom. Because I don't want to get up there and just spout out a bunch of words. I need to understand kingdom. So that I can bring the kingdom everywhere I go. And he says, seek first. So I began to seek. That's when he began to show me the things like, there are secrets that he wants to give us deep revelation to. And as I began to ask him, he began to show me the little things 
of how we already, I didn't understand about receive and that it was to receive. I know that don't make no sense to y'all, but I did not understand it was to have again. I did not understand that it was re meant we were going back to what we already had. I just, it didn't hit me. And he began to show me that, and I'm thinking, that to me became more real. Wait a minute. Wow. So not only did Jesus win all that back for us, but I've got to really sit down and figure out how, how do I do this? How do I walk like a king? I'm not from a kingdom. We're a democracy here in America, right? We're a democracy. We are supposed to have the say-so, but we do vote in. We don't really have as much say as we'd like to have, but it's run as we have the citizens have a say. A kingdom is usually run as a monarchy system where one person usually inherits or marries into that position. And we think a monarchy system sounds like something we wouldn't want to live in, but the truth of it is, is in this case, God is the ultimate Lord and King. We are supposed to do everything that he says. We don't need citizen input on the kingdom of God. We don't. We need God's input to us. He don't need ours because he's perfect in all his ways. He's perfect in all his ways, and he knows everything. And, you know, he is so intelligent. If we had half the brains that God has, we'd have figured this out a long time ago. But listen, you don't have to be real smart to know God's secrets. Because he'll have you living like a king if you seek his kingdom. Because it don't take intelligence to understand the kingdom. It takes an open heart, an open line with the Lord and the willingness to learn. We have things to learn. We are a church. Big church. I'm talking about the big church. We are a church that is supposed to be advancing the kingdom and going out every day and showing how it is to live kingdom and how good we are living kingdom. We're to show them the authority that we have as kings. We're to show them that we got a wonderful life, right? Things happen in life. But... We can walk and be just as abundantly living and joyous as an actual king with nothing that stands in between us and the promises of God. So as you're seeking the kingdom of God, begin to look at it as like, I am seeking the kingdom of God. I am seeking the secrets of the kingdom. The secrets that are going to help me with my destiny. They're going to help me work out the things here on the earth that God's got to work through me. They're going to help me advance the kingdom. Oh, and they're going to show me Holy Spirit power in my life. So for you that are hungry, you'll pursue what you're hungry for. You'll pursue what you want. You'll pursue what's important to you. Pursue it. Because we need to get into a frame of mind where we do this. Okay. Okay. I am a Christian, but I am a king. And today I am going to begin to live like a king. That means when I go out to my car, there's not going to be anybody there opening the door for me. I don't get that kind of kingship. But when I go out to my car and I get in it, I'm going to put my head up, not out of pride, but Wanda, you are a child of the God Most High. Everything you need this day, you got. There is nothing that can come against you because even the gates of hell won't prevail against you. You are not lacking anything for there's no lack in the kingdom of God. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed to be a blessing. That's what we are. That's what we are, y'all. That's what we are. Stand up in your kingship. Step into it. Don't walk around beat down because you are not beat down. You're a king. You're a child of God. You have the kingdom. You have everything. Your future is secure. But seek the secrets because seek the supernatural. Because it's when we begin to see those things happening at this altar and out when we take that. Listen, 
When we're kingdom people being healed and, and flourishing and living in the supernatural. And then we go out to our families. Everybody says, I don't. listen, the biggest thing my family says, I don't want to hear that crap. I'm talking about the Lord and they're calling it crap. But you know what? I may not be able to get them to hear me, but buddy, whenever I pray and God moves, they're going to see it. So they have no trouble seeing it. And they'll believe it when they see it. So I've, I've done it, y'all. I can see and preach it to you all day long. I've done it. I've done the witnessing. I've done the telling my kids what they need to do. I've told them what God wants from them. I've took them to church. I've showed them everything. And they still want to do drugs. I need the supernatural. We need the supernatural. It's when we walk in the supernatural that we're doing what God says. That's when we walk in that power, that authority, that dominion, all of it. He gives us the kingdom, but he also gives us the power. But if we don't use it, I can't have a light bulb that, that's going to work if I'm not plugging it into the outlet. So I know. I know who I am. I really do. A week ago, I may not have. But I know who I am. I am not concerned about my finances. Because I'm rich. I am not concerned about my future. Because I'll go where God says go. I'll say what he says to say. And beyond doing everything he done. See that's why we do what he does. We say what he says. Everything he said and done was imperfection. Everything he said and done was the right way. So we need to follow the right way. So be encouraged to know that you can live like a king. Amen. Be encouraged to know that if you seek the kingdom, you're seeking secrets. And you can walk in the supernatural because everything. Listen, when he told them, be ye filled with the Holy Ghost, he was giving them that power. He gave it to us. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is not someone who we just leave dormant. He's there. He's ready to be used. He wants us to, to ask for those miracles and those things to be performed. He wants to manifest God's presence. The problem is, is we're a kingdom people with access to the supernatural, everything, but we're not utilizing Everything we've been given as kingdom citizens. So go ahead and witness. Go ahead. Tell them about the word of God. But I would encourage you to seek the supernatural and show them the power of God. Because you're supposed to be living as a king. So today's the day to start living as a king. Pay attention to that verse. Go home. When you're getting in your Bible study, begin to study that verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and all else will be added unto you. And that's a verse that you can hold on to every day. What do I need? Uh, seek the kingdom of God. God, I got a problem. Seek the kingdom of God. Don't just stop at Jesus came. He gave me everything back. Now, I'm going to heaven, or I'm going to live on this earth and rule for eternity. And I just need to witness to get people saved. Change your attitude. Get up. God, today is a day for the supernatural. I thank you, Lord, that everywhere I go, I'm taking the kingdom with me. And I thank you, God, that you'll manifest your presence in my life this day. And, Lord, I will go and conquer the other kingdoms. And, Lord, I will cause them to become like me. Pledge it to yourself. Pledge it to yourself. Make it part of your life. Make it part of your schedule. Seek the supernatural. Seek the secret. Seek God. Seek the kingdom. It's not just about Jesus. It is, but it's also about the kingdom. So make the kingdom the most important thing because Jesus is the kingdom. And he is. So when we, when we are living like Jesus, we are living kingdom. 
But don't you ever forget, your kings and priests, it's time to start living like a king. And I love you. Thank you. <laughs>